one. For the last moments of the intercessory prayer, let's lift up our leaders. Fire from heaven, fire now in the name of Jesus. Lift her heart in the name of Jesus. Where she is burning and where she is concerned, the Lord said He will perfect the concern of your heart. He will perfect that thing. Even the relationships with her son, perfect their situation, Father. In the name of Jesus, and bring it in, Father. In the name of Jesus. Not just one by one, but all three at the same time. Jesus. Jesus. And we're going to call out their names. So angels, you will hear their names. Trey, Darian, and Javon, Junior, that one. Bring them in, Father, in the name of Jesus. Minister and angels, speak to them all night long. All night long, let them toss and turn because they're set on fire. They hear your voice and they don't know what's going on. But God, minister to them right now in the name of Jesus. Fill them with the Holy Ghost and bring them in. Let them be servants of the Most High God. Let them follow after mommy and daddy in the name of Jesus. To heal the sick, to lay hands on the sick and they recover. To speak a thing and it shall be so. To be above and not beneath in the name of Jesus. Let them know and see that your word is true. That what mommy and daddy said wasn't a lie. You are not named God and you cannot lie. So God, as you will do for our leaders, like the oil from Aaron's beard fell down to each one of us. But we have spoken above to our leaders.
leaders, upon our leaders. Be it up to us when you lift your hands and receive from God. He has no respect of person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What he's done. Yeah. And what he is doing, what he is doing in our leader's life, there you shall receive in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all excited tonight? Amen. Are y'all excited tonight? Amen. you are going to triumph. He created this day knowing that you got the victory. He created this day for you to walk with a pure heart. Hallelujah. This is the day that my God has made. Hallelujah. He created this day for you to depopulate hell and populate heaven. He created this day for you to walk like you got the victory and no longer walk like you're a victim. Hallelujah. This is the day that our God has made. Hallelujah. Therefore, we choose to rejoice and be glad in him. Hallelujah. I'm excited tonight. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord gave me a word today. And I said, Lord, what is it that you want to talk to your people about? He actually gave it to me a couple of days ago. And I was actually studying it for myself. And he said, what I want you to, and I asked, could I share it? Because this is a time for me to share. Amen. Amen. And so what you're doing is sitting in on my Bible study. Right. Amen. So what he's going to do is, is create something new, fresh, reviving, and, and, and do whatever, because y'all going to get it when I get it, because I ain't even got it all yet. Amen? Amen? So it's called The Greatest Weapon, The Name of Jesus. <laughs> the Greatest Weapon is the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is the greatest weapon that overcome every power, every power of darkness. But a lot of times Christians do not use this weapon on a regular basis. I'm going to say that again. The greatest weapon that can overcome any darkness, any darkness, so I don't care what, pre what, what it presents, that can overcome any darkness is the name of Jesus. I need you to understand, so whatever darkness may be in your life, the name of Jesus can overcome it. Amen. And as long as you can speak the name of Jesus, you can overcome. Amen. So I don't care what, what's going on in your life. I'm going to show you tonight that the name of it's time out for talking about I know this, I know this, and not demonstrating it on a regular basis. The name of Jesus will overcome. Amen? Amen? Amen. I was telling the women of God uh, the prophets that I had left my keys in LAX, which is the international airport in Los Angeles. And most people would have snapped because they know they get over 4,714 just lost and found a month. It takes five weeks for them to even review to even review your, applica your application stating that something is lost or your claim. Yeah, yeah. Five weeks. I have my keys today. Yeah. Why? Because the name yeah. of Jesus. Yeah. And so I have what they call an Apple Air, Air Tag on it, which is a tracker. Yeah. And I could see my keys going in and out of the airport. Going behind the walls, y'all ain't hearing me, yeah. of the airport, something that's mine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sure. Something that's mine, I could see, yeah. but I didn't have access to it. Oh. God said that's how your faith has to be. Yeah. Yeah. 
You can see things moving in your life, but you got to know even though you don't have access, it's coming. Are you hearing me? Is your stuff coming? Even though you can see it and you don't have access to it, it's still coming. Amen. Amen. What made it move? My persistency. Persistency. I think about the woman that was just calling and coming and coming and coming. And it was her persistency that led the king to say, look, give her whatever she wants to keep her quiet. Amen? Amen. So your persistency is the key to getting what the things that God has for you. Your hunger and your persistency is the key. Partnered with the name of Jesus. Because the name of Jesus is your weapon. So if you're walking around here depressed, looking sad, looking right crazy, big lips, hair all over your head, ain't taking care of yourself, worried about everything, you're not using your weapons and it's your fault. Are you hearing me? It's nobody else's fault but yours. If you don't see movement in your life, if it's not a principality, it's your fault because you're not using your weapons. Because the weapons of our warfare are not what? So what happens is we allow our weapons to be inactive. We allow our, we allow our weapons to be dormant. We allow our weapons to be concealed. We allow his name to be concealed in our life. And we don't understand the value of his name and when we call on his name he said I will answer you and not only will I answer you Jeremiah 33 3 he said I will show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not it's not enough for you to call on him he said but if I call I'm gonna show you something I'm gonna do something great and mighty things that thou knowest not see that was great and mighty things the lady that was assisting me the entire time while I was in LA, uh, while I was in California, I didn't even know it, but she was a former employee of LAX. <laughs> and so God allowed the favor on her life yes. to give her an international buddy pass mm. to go behind the scenes uh -oh. and get my keys. Now, I need you to understand the power of a miracle because I said, Lord, my husband is teaching on the blood. I mean, the blood, the power of miracles. And he said, I need you to partner that with his name, with my name, because when you walk in miracles and you understand you're walking in miracles, the miracles happen as a result of what's attached to the miracle, yeah. the name of Jesus. So if you don't recognize that the name of Jesus is a weapon, then you won't be able to use all of your weapons to receive the miracle. Amen. Amen. So anyway, uh, she gets back there and she walks up and she said, Apostle, they're about to bring me your keys. So she puts me on a FaceTime. And when she puts me on a FaceTime, the man walks up and she has the phone kind of down. And she said, oh, no, I'm not looking for a purse. I'm looking for keys. That's definitely not Apostle's purse because it was a crocheted bag that was a, a, a Karen, a carry, what do you call it? Crossbody. No, no, ever. Okay? And she said, oh, no, that's definitely not Apostle's bag, but I'm looking for keys. And you know what the man said? The keys are in that bag. So my keys was in somebody else's stuff. So in the natural, y'all ain't hearing me, my stuff had been partnered with somebody else's stuff so they never would have found my keys. But when you understand the power of the name of Jesus and what you carry, now keep in mind, you can't even call LAX. There's no phone number. For lost and found, there's no place for you to call. It's strictly, uh, uh, I didn't even get an answering service. I, all I got was an email. email. This is what you have to do. 
And so when I emailed the people, I did everything. Now there's an email for TC, uh, TCA. There's an email for the police airport. And then there's an email for the airport. Three different emails for three different lost and founds. But my stuff was placed in the right place. At the, wrong, at the wrong stuff, in the wrong place, but the right place, at the right time. Are you hearing me? I was able to get phone numbers. I was able to get cell phone numbers of people that I didn't even have relationship with, didn't even know them, janitor supervisors, because I was persistent. My husband, God gave him my call, let's look on Yelp to try to find a phone number. And we looked on Yelp, and sure enough, they had a phone number for Yelp for the, one of the local restaurants. And then when I called the local restaurant that we didn't even eat at, they were willing to give me a friend who was a janitor's phone number, personal phone number. Persistency in the name of Jesus, not panic. Because I didn't even realize I left my keys until I got home. And I was putting away my things. And I was just as calm. I'm, I'm more hyped now than I was then. And I said, I left my keys. And Devon said, well, I can tell you exactly where they are. And he went on our look, his little phone and he said, they're at LAX. It's persistency. It's how bad you want what God wants you to have. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. We're no longer going to allow the name of Jesus to be inactive in our life. We're no longer going to allow uh, us to conceal his name or it to be uh, dormant. One thing for certain, God will never force anything on anyone, not even the weapons available for his victory. God will not force anything on you, not even the weapons for his victory. Yeah. Mm, I'm going to say that again. Your weapon is for his victory. Amen. Your weapon is for his victory, not yours. You get to reap the benefits of it. Yeah. But victory belongs to who? So what is a weapon? A weapon is any instrument, I'm going to say that again, any instrument or device for use in attack or defense in combat, fighting, war, a sword, a rifle, or a cannon, anything used to, against an opponent, anything used towards your adversary, anything used towards your victim. Good God Almighty. It's an instrument or a device. What did I just say the greatest weapon is? The name of Jesus. So God's word is an instrument. Hey. His word is an instrument used to take down your adversary. Yeah. Glory be to God. It's a device used to take down the enemy. It's a device used to take out anything that tries to come up against you. And until you see it that way, it'll stay that way. Amen. Look at Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. We're going to pick it up in verse 9, if you would, please. What y'all doing? Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. I want you to read it, if you would, please, out of the NLT version. Sorry about that. I mean, New King James. New King James. Nine says, I'll start off. Therefore, God also has what? Has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. God exalted him and gave him the name that's above what? Every, every name. name. So depression, hurting, yeah. fighting, all of that. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I refuse to allow this spirit to come up against this word. So we silence the voice of the enemy 
and we change the frequency right now of your mind. I command the voices to silence right now. I take apostolic prophetic jurisdiction over your body right now in the name of Jesus, over your mind. In the name of Jesus, I said silence. In Jesus' name. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. I don't care what something is saying to you. I don't care what your bank account looks like. I don't care what your mind is saying. I don't care what you feel. Your feelings are subjective. They change. Verse 10. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of those in heaven and those of earth and those of those under the earth. And that Read that again. I need you to start again. Verse 10. That that in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of those in heaven and those of earth and of those under the earth. And that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So it's a privilege for us to have access to the name, the powerful name of Jesus Christ. And anyone who gets hold of his name understands that when you get hold of his name, his name gives you authority. Come on. Yeah. I need you to understand that when you call on his name, it gives you authority. Not about how much word you know. It's not about how much you can do. It's not about how anointed you are. When you call on his name, it gives you authority over anything that will try to overcome you. It does not matter. His name is sovereign. His name itself gives you the authority that you need to depopulate hell and populate heaven, to strip off depression, to strip off anxiety, worry, fear, anything that will oppose the will of God. His name gives you that authority. Why? Because his name is above every name. And every knee, every knee, if you got a knee, what's going to happen? <laughs> if you have a knee, what's going to happen? It's going to bow. And every knee shall bow in those in heaven and in those where? He said, in the heavenly realm, everything got to bow to me at the name. And even in the earthly realm. So the same authority that's going on in heaven is the same authority that I gave you on earth. It is made available to you. And all you have to do is call on it. My God. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him what? The name which is above every name. And at that name of Jesus, every knee should bow uh, of those in heaven and those on earth and those where? Under the Even earth. those underneath the earth got to bow down. Y'all ain't hearing me. Yeah, every dead thing. Verse 11. And every what? And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and to the glory of God the Father. To the glory of God the Father. It makes a big difference. Every tongue has to confess this. How can you or we as Christians have a great weapon and cry over spilled milk? How can we have such a great weapon and be frustrated on a regular? We, this is what we say we know. We say we know this. He's given us power in the name, but we get frustrated over spilled milk. We get frustrated because things are not going our way. We get frustrated because our bank account is messed up. But guess what? We're the ones that messed it up for mismanaging the funds. Why should we allow ourselves to be beaten down and trotted when we have the authority that we have? And all we have to do is say one word, Jesus and take authority over the situation in his name. Amen. 
Look at Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. And we're going to pick it up in verse 19. Don't you realize that agreement in his name will birth a blessing? Yeah. Agreement in the Father's name births. It births blessings. Yeah. Mean it conceives. Good God Almighty. Look at uh, 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 Matthew chapter 18, picking it up in verse 19 and 20. Again, I say to you, that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them. He said, if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done how? It will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Okay, go ahead. For where two or three are gathered together in my name. How? Gathered yeah. together in my name. In whose name? Jesus. Name. In Jesus' name. That's what we're talking about, right? Because this is him speaking in the red. Mm -hmm. All right? If you gather together in my name, where am I? I am there in the midst of them. So he said if two of you on earth are agreeing, it's going to be done in the Father's name. Y'all ain't hearing me. He said I put my Father on it. Come on. <laughs> if you just agree, I won't even deal with it. I just go straight to the Father for you. Yeah. Now let me tell you what I'll do in my name. Read verse 20. Where, where there are two or three gathered. So if you're just coming together in unity together, then what? Gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. I'm going to be in the midst of what you just asked for. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to cover what you asked for. And because you asked in the Father's name and you came to agreement in unity, my Father is going to do it because you came together in order. The Bible says in Psalms 133, what? In the place of love and unity, he will do what? Command the blessing. Why he can command the blessing is because you're walking in unity yeah. with two and four. Does that make sense? Yeah. So why are we whining, screaming, and complaining about authority that we've been given in Jesus' name when he said, if you just get with your bro, if you just get with your sus, I'll just send my dad and he'll do what you need. Then I'm going to come because you walked in unity and command the blessing. Yes. Hallelujah. This is the authority that you have in his name. Yes. I'm going to stand in the midst of that situation that seems dead and dormant. I'm putting my name on it. See, back in the day, we used to say, I put my name on it. I don't know about y'all. I don't know if y'all know about that. But back in the day, I used to be like, I put my name on that. That meant something to me. It may not mean something to you, but it meant something to me. And see, those that respected, those that honored, those that knew when I say I put my name on it, it was sealed and good. Those that respect and know that when he put his name on a thing, it's sealed and it's good and it's going to happen. And there it is. <laughs> That's why it's going to work. Because agreement in his name births blessings. But if you if agreement can't, in his name can't birth you nothing if you don't understand the power and the authority of his name. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. All right. Go to John chapter 15. Everything is God's timing. This is why we have to come together in prayer and pray. talk about the scripture I just read in Matthew. That's why you got to ask the people up front. Hey, what, what, what am I praying for? You know, I know apostle gave an altar call, but what am I praying for? What is it that you, when is the time associated with it? Yeah. Do you want this right now, next week, next month? Right, right. What do you need this for? Do you follow what I'm saying? I need to know this because I am not, I refuse. Are you hearing me? I refuse. Wait a minute, bro. Don't be messing up what you're doing. Oh. Um, so one of the things we're going to do, let me snatch it in. 
We have to be mindful of us walking into this place of authority. And in order to walk into this place of authority, we walk in what we carry. We walk in what we carry. I walk in the presence of God, so therefore I carry the presence of God. That means if I carry his presence, that means I carry his authority. That means I carry his power. Because the power of life and death is well in my tongue. So when I begin to speak, things have to come in alignment. Because at the end of it, I'm going to put this seal on it called the name of Jesus. I put my name on it. Instead of me saying my name now, I put his name on it. It's sealed. So when you go in the bank and you're applying for a loan, I put his name on it. The things that you're desiring, not just materialistic things or things that you may have need of in your mind and in your body. When you get a bad report, good report or whatever, I put his name on it. J.C. J.C. Swilliams. That's how I sign my name. S. Williams. So it's Williams. I sign Swilliams. J.C. I put his name on it. Why? Because I'm walking in the authority and it's not just something I'm saying, uh, not just something that I think, this is something that I know. Because guess what? Those people that understand, know, perceive, and recognize that I'm believing the thing that I speak. I'm believing the thing that I carry. I'm believing the thing that I walk in. Therefore, I'm walking in the power. I'm walking in the authority. And I'm walking in the nature of Christ. Therefore, everything has to line up. I'm not cocky. I'm just confident in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm not cocky. I'm just confident in him. Hallelujah. John chapter 15. Partnering with the Father assists you in bearing fruit. When you partner with the Father, it assists you in bearing fruit. I was talking to Mike. Uh, When did we pick you up, Mike, the other day? The other day, me and Mike was talking in the car. And so Apostle and I was coming, Sunday, wasn't it? Sunday, we were coming from doing our little thing, we having a little date or whatever, and on the way back, the mom said, Stacy, there's Mike. So we did a pop, the U-turn in the middle of the street, came back and picked him up, and he was going to Petco, and he was going to get something for his cat. He was partnering with the grace, with the finances that he had on the inside of his pocket. And he said, the Lord told me that if I take good care of this cat, then he's going to take good care of me. Come Y'all ain't hearing me. He said, if I, how I steward over this cat. God is saying how I'm going to steward over you. So if you abuse this cat, do you want to abuse you? He won't do that. But he'll put a, he, you, he'll allow uh, 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 head, the head you come off of you. Yeah. You follow what I'm saying? So he began to partner with the grace. He began to partner with the fruit. Let me show you. John chapter 15, partner with the father, assist you in bearing fruit. And not only fruit, but fruit that will remain. Verse 16 through 17, if you would, please. You did not choose what? You did not choose me. He said, let me make it plain to you. Don't think you're running around here like you did me a favor. Exactly. Don't think, oh, I'm choosing you today because I was that arrogant. I was. I thought I was doing God a favor when I came to church on Sunday. That's how my mind was because I didn't know any better. I'm doing you a favor, Lord. I'm going to make, I'm going, this is what I used to say. I'm going to make you happy. I'm going to church today. And I was dead serious. I didn't see anything wrong with that. I'm making God happy. That was the lack of revelation I had. Because he was there to bring me what I needed. But I didn't have that level of revelation. So I thought I was doing something. Uh Uh-uh. I thought I was doing something, Prophet is Terry, by going to church to make him happy, not knowing, not seeing the need that I had for him. I just saw the need I thought he had for me. 
That was just my testimony. I don't know about y'all. Y'all might have had that relationship, but that's what I would say to him. And so I would get dressed and get ready. And when I walked through that door, I was making him happy. Until I saw the need that I really had for him. And I began to renew my mind. He said, you didn't choose me. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And, and not only did I choose you, what did I do? I appointed you. I appointed you. That you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit shall remain. Right there. You didn't choose me, Stacy. I chose you. Don't get ahead of yourself. I need you to understand that I give you the desires of your heart. So for you to be here tonight, do you think that desire came from you? Right, no. Ah. No. Do you think tonight, because you're here, and every time you step through this door, that desire came from you? He said, no, I appointed you. I gave you the desires of your heart. I chose you today to be up in here. Yeah. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And not only did I choose you, I appointed you. So the office that you walk in, the desires that you have, I did that. Why? So that you can go and bear fruit. I'm giving you the desire so that you can be fruitful. I'm giving you the desire so that you can partner with my work. When you partner with my work, I'm, I'm put in a position that I have to do something. When you partner with my work, yeah. like you come in here tonight, when you partner with my work, yeah. come in the choir rehearsal. Yeah. When you partner with my work, cleaning and doing the things that you do for the ministry, when you partner with my work, I will appoint you. Yeah. And not only will I appoint you, you're going to bear fruit. And not only are you going to bear fruit, you're going to bear fruit that will remain. Yeah. It'll never leave. It's just like that faucet. It's on a constant flow. Yeah. You, you the spoiled kid. You the spoiled kid. I'm telling you. I'm the spoiled kid. It ain't nothing that I ask for that I don't get. I'm going to be 100% honest with you. And I'm not talking about the things that I need, even the desires of my heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm not making it up. Not because I'm special or nothing like that. But I partner with the fruit. I partner with the Father. And because I partner with the Father, he gives me fruit. I don't have to ask for it. I'm going to be 100% honest with you. I don't pray for nothing for me. I don't, I don't, I don't have time for that. I don't, I, don't pray, I, don't, I don't pray for me. I'm going to be honest with you. You can pray for you. I don't have a problem with you praying for you. That's fine if you want to do it. Ain't absolutely nothing. But I don't pray for me. I don't have to pray for me. I ain't been asleep in two days praying for a woman. Two days. I ain't had, I'm, 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 I'm like wired right now because when, when I love somebody yeah. and they going through and I know it's a principality, I ain't got time for sleep. Yeah. This woman is homeless with five kids. Ain't no way in the world I'm going to sleep. Yeah. Right. She ain't even my family, but she a spiritual daughter. That's enough for me. Yeah. I guess you know movement is taking place today. Yeah. Because I'm Because I'm persistent in his name and I'm taking authority. I said, you will no longer torment her. Well, she has to stay homeless, living in a one bedroom with an old woman and five kids. The devil is a liar. No more. Today it stops. I will not rest. And God began to move because I'm walking in the authority. I walk in the fruit. And he said, I'm going to give you fruit that will remain. That fruit ain't just for you. Yes, 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 yes. How many farmers you know got all this fruit for them? Not one. They store up all of that seed. They store, excuse me, they plant all of that seed. They reap that harvest to make more money. Well, I reap my harvest to sow more seed. Yes. I tell the people on my job on a regular, you can tell, you can believe that, this money ain't nothing but my seed. And when if it ain't enough to meet my need, it ain't nothing but a seed. I'm telling you right now. 
if it's not enough money, mother, because I, I, I don't live this principle by life, but I ain't got enough money to pay bills. Yeah. <laughs> it ain't nothing but a seed. Let me give it away because it ain't going to do nothing That's with it. it. Yeah. Come on. That's the truth. Yeah. I'm telling you, Amen. it ain't enough to meet the need. Let me go on and give you the seed. Yeah. I just make sure that ground that I'm giving it in is right. Yeah. 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 You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. That's real talk. Yeah. But most of us want to hoard. Well, that's why you ain't getting nothing, cause he can't. even in the natural, if the if the if the man give you seed, and you trying to hoard it in the barn, and it's time to plant it, how you gonna reap a harvest? You can't. It's gonna go bad, and you just wasted everything trying to hoard something that it can't give you no return. So why are we trying to hoard depression, hurt? anxiety, bitterness, when we walking around with the presence of God, the authority of God, the power of God, and all of it in one word, Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> so he says here, you did not choose me, but I chose you. And not only did I choose you, I appointed you that you should go and do what? Bear fruit and that your fruit should do what? That Why? That whatever you ask in the Father. He said, I want your fruit to remain. I'm promising you that your fruit will remain so that what? So that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. That's what I'm worried about praying for myself. Exactly. Yeah. I'm just being honest. I, I, I don't ask for things. I, I don't pray for me. I pray for you. Y'all see, because if I keep you all covered, and at, that's what the Father would have me to do, I'm always right standing. But see, if I get to praying for myself, I might pray amiss Come on. and start Come on. praying for something I ain't got no business thinking I'm ready for. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then I'm praying amiss, so now I'm out of the will of God, and now I'm holding back what should come freely. So it's just easier to pray for others so that I'm not praying amiss so that I can reap a harvest where I bestowed no labor. Mm. Uh, yeah. Glory be to God. I don't know about y'all, but I want to reap a harvest where I bestowed no labor, meaning somebody else bestowed the labor. All I do is reap their harvest. Yeah. This harvest time because he begins to, they begin to give. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall what? Men give well unto your bosom for the same measure you give, you give it shall be given what? So why would I waste my time praying for me when I can pray for others and reap a harvest where I bestow no labor? You better read the word. Mm, mm, mm. Now, ain't there nothing wrong with praying for other people. I'm just saying in my time, yeah. in my prayer time, yeah. I don't do that because he cares for me. Yeah. Verse 17, he says, these things I command you. That wasn't a suggestion. <laughs> that wasn't a suggestion. He didn't, he didn't braid it plain. These things I what? I command you. That you love one another. Amen. Are you hearing me? That's what he's saying. So it's not a suggestion. He's talking about these things, the things that we just talked about. Also, you loving one another. These things I command you that you love one another. These things, talking about the things previously, as well as these things, meaning you loving one another. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. Do we agree on that? Yes. Do you all see that? Yes. Because that's what we skip over. So partnering with the Father assists you in bearing fruit. And not only fruit, it gives you fruit that will remain. Yes. Amen. And I need fruit that's going to always be there. Because a lot of us are eating our seed. We're eating our seed. When it ain't enough, we just go eat. Instead of storing up. And when we eat our seed, we, get, we, we don't get a return. 
There's no return. And so we wonder why others are prospering and we're not because we're eating our seed. How do we eat our seed? Not by, by not sowing it. By not sowing seed and holding on to it. And it's hindering in poverty because God can only multiply the seed sown. That's straight word. And increase the fruit. reap what he did not sow. No. Hello? No. Am, I, am, I, am I crazy up in here? No. If he doesn't sow, he can never what? Reap. So if you are never sowing, how can you ever reap? So it's not just money. That's everything. Your time your talent, your treasure, your heart, your mouth, yeah. your attitude, your yeah. character, yeah. what you're believing God for, you can sow doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever you're sowing, you're going to reap. Yeah. What comes up? Yeah. It's the law of rep repercost yeah. gravity and what is it called? Reprocosity? Thank you. Reciprocity. I can't say the word, but yeah. Prophet is there and said it. Okay? It's the law. So don't make it deep. Don't make it deep. Don't try to act like I got to be spiritual to memorize that. No. You're not having what you're not having because you're not engaging with the authority that's given to you. And things can torment you. Things can happen to you, if you because you are allowing it. And until you take it arrested and understands that it has authority, then it's going to keep doing what it's doing and it has legal rights. Yes. Yes. Don't care nothing about your ignorance. It loves it. Because yeah. the more you doubt, the more it punches you in the head. If you think you'll always be poor, you'll always be poor. If you think you'll never win, you'll never win. If you think you'll never have more than enough, you'll never have more than enough. If you think you're going, your body and your mind is always going to be that way, guess what? It's always going to be that way. I tell people two things. Either you're going to be like me or I'm going to be like you if you're around me. You follow what I'm saying? And I'm coming up on a regular. I am not going to, you, you will never see me the same. If you see me the same way that I was last, in three months, check me. I'm going to give you three months. Three months. If you don't see growth in three months in my life, every three months, I need you to check me. Yeah. Open. See, because I'm hungry. Yeah. And his word is, it, you can't exhaust it. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So you should see growth and you should see development. You should see acceleration. You should see stretching on my life. You should see pushing on my life. You should see me struggling sometimes. You should see me pressing sometimes. You should see me running sometimes. You should see me resting. You should never see me the same. But always conquering. Why? Because I have the name of Jesus. I have his power, I have his authority, and I have his presence. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at Ephesians chapter 1. Are y'all getting something tonight? Yes. Anybody have anything to say about that? Okay, we got two people. We're going to go to Brother Mike and then we'll go to Prophetess Terry. Y'all can say one thing about uh, Pastor, uh, the Apostle Stacy, like she's 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 telling you the truth. You know what I'm saying? Everything God's doing is like it's a miracle. You know what I'm saying? Like like me, I'm you know, you know doing what I'm supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? I got a job and doing what I'm supposed to do. I'm not following what the Lord and what the Lord tells me to do. I can't do nothing else but give you what the Lord gives me and put on my heart. Mm -hmm. So you know what I'm saying? Sometimes I sit there and I go through a lot of stuff. I gotta get. You know what I'm saying? I was in the same. I'm in still in the same shape. That lady, in, that lady, in, like, I be praying for people like that too. It breaks my heart sometimes when I see people out there in, out there in the streets, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, why, 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 why do you think?
thing Jesus, Jesus ain't left you in the streets yet. But he's still working with me. And like, I, I would never go back to where I was, where, where I came from. I came a long ways to where I came from. Amen. I'd never Amen. go back to the old Amen. me. You know what I'm saying? Like, if people downtown see the, the good in me every time they see me, like me, I'm taking care of that cat. I'm taking care of my responsibilities. I got a job. Yeah. Good Lord, do that for me. I ain't done it on my own. I didn't wake up this morning by myself. Amen. And, and the Lord tells you this. The Lord, the Lord said, I, I shall not want you. You know, I'll leave you like still water. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, he's there. He's there with you every day, every minute of your time. Amen. And even if you're sitting in a tent, or you're sitting at your house, or you're sitting in church, wherever you're sitting at, God's with you every day, every single day. He knows your struggles, and he knows what you're going through. Like me, he knows exactly what I'm going through. Because I can testify and say, with the Lord done me, the Lord got me a phone. The Lord did me, the Lord take care of me, take me in the, take care of me and cat every day. Down like down town, I could testify when the guy gave me six dollars last night to take care of the cat. I took the money and gave it back to him. I said, I don't want the money. Mm. He was like, I need you to take the money. I was like, I can't take your money back. Because I got I, the cat's got everything he needs. You know what I'm saying? I said, Jesus is gonna take care of him. That's what I told the mm. guy down town last night. Amen. He's take care of me. Amen. And, and the good Lord. He's gonna pull me out that tent sooner or later. I'm just waiting, being patient. Hey, on, say you know, that. He's gonna take me out that tent. He's gonna do what he's gonna do. He say he's gonna do. You know. Amen. He never let me down. I believe in God every day. And pastors, and Pastor Stacy is telling you the truth. Everything she's telling you. I saw, I saw a seed every day. I saw a seed to people every day. I sent my home with five dollars on cash out. But guess what? I didn't, I, I didn't need it because I give it to somebody else that, that really needed it. I was exactly. on the seed, just like Pastor says. That's it. Oh, amen. 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 Living in a tent still sowing seed. Hey! I don't want to get no excuses. No, no excuses. excuses. None. Glory be to God. Um, as you were talking about uh, here in Philippians, the Holy Spirit whispered to me the reason, the reason why the fruit grows and the reason why it remains it's because that it grows out of love. That's why we are commanded to love. Your, that's what causes fruit to grow. When the soil is right, your crops will grow plentiful. But if your soil is hard, if it's not full of nutrients, you won't receive a harvest. So your soil has to be full of love in order for it to grow and your fruit to remain. Amen. That's good. Amen. That's good. Watch your soil. You better watch your soil because you can't even plant a seed if the soil is stony. And to and the, and the tear up that ground, I don't know about y'all, but when we was a little girl, we had a tiller. <laughs> and the tiller is what you use to till the ground. Yeah. And we used to have to get out there and till the yard. But sometimes the best time to till the yard was after the rain came. Yeah. That's right. yeah. Yeah. And so as a little girl, I knew how to run the tiller. But if you don't hold on to that tiller right, that tiller will run away from you. Yeah. It'll take off and, and, it's, and it's, it's because it'll walk the ground. Yeah. It'll walk the surface rather than digging deep. Yeah. I know what I'm talking about in the surface. So in order to fill the ground when it's stony like that, you just got to hold the tiller in its place for a minute. Yeah. Ooh! And see, you hold the tiller in its place for a minute so that it can just uh, till in that area. Yeah. And then you just inch forward a little bit so it could till it a little further. Yeah. Wow. You follow what I'm saying? Amen. But if the ground is right yeah. and, the, and, and, and the soil is where it needs to be and it's pliable, Amen. you can just, yeah. you can have a cadence. Yeah. Even in your book, yes. while you holding the tiller. Yes. But when it's not like that, there's resistance. Yes. And you have to fight it yes. to be able to put seed in the ground. Mm -hmm. Our hearts can't be stony like that. That's the power of a tiller. Yes. Because a tiller can get away from you. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget as a little girl, the guy almost got away from me. But my brothers were there to protect me. Because it'll cut your leg open. It's, it's blades. Yeah. The blades are wide open. Yeah, and so you're holding this machine that's ran by a motor. Yeah. And once it let go, it'll just walk. And go wherever it wants to go because it has no one guiding it. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. And it'll end up destroying the ground and, destro and destroying you. Yeah. And everything around it. So one time, we, my brother was out there tilling the ground, and here come old, a little snake. 
and he tilled the snake because he was in the way. And so he cut the snake up and he kept on tilling. And then he went down around about the third or fourth row, I'll never forget it. And it was a whole family of them. And he cut the whole family up. It was like 50 of them. The little baby, she done birthed. Yeah. Everybody had to die. Because they were going to destroy. You follow what I'm saying? The fruit that we were trying to plant there, the seed that we were going to plant. We couldn't allow that to stay and take residence. So you got to watch, even when you till the ground, you got to watch the ground. Not to only to make sure that it's fertile, but make sure what you cutting up. Mm -mm. Good God Almighty. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, and we're going to pick it up. This is going to be our last scripture for the night. It's 751. I did pretty good. I'm like, yeah. I, didn't th I thought I was going to. Amen. Praise God. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Ephesians chapter 1. This is a very familiar passage of scripture, but he gave me this uh, in a different way. You know, that's what I love about the Lord, because he will give you what you need in his word, and it is inexhaustible. If he will give you different revelations, even though it's the same word. Amen? Amen. Yes. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 18 through 21 says what? The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know. What is the hope of his calling? He said, I need your eyes to be open. Yes. And I need them to be open so that you can understand something. I need you to be able to grasp an idea. I need you to be able to comprehend something, that your eyes will be open, that it would be enlightened, that you may know what is the what? The hope of his calling. Mm -hmm. What are the riches of, of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? He said, I need you to understand when your eyes are enlightened, there's something that I want you to do. I want you to know the hope of my calling for you. I want you to understand that what the riches and the glory are for the inheritance that I have for you. And verse 19 is where we're going to put emphasis. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe? He okay. said, what is the exceeding greatness of his power? When you understand, when you're able to grasp when you're able to comprehend what is the exceeding greatness of his power, then you begin to work with him in his mighty power. When you begin to know and understand and believe the exceeding greatness of his power, when you understand the greatness of his power, then you can begin to work with him in his mighty power. When you understand. He said, look up the word believe. To believe means to have full confidence in the truth. It means to admit, accept, but I love this one, maintain. My God. In other words, he's saying, when you understand, when you grasp, when you understand and comprehend the idea of the exceeding greatness of my power, then you can begin to work and partner with him in his mighty power. I get to partner with the mighty power when I understand the exceeding greatness of his power. Does that make sense? Yeah. So God is equipping us to work with his exceeding power so that we can work in the greatness of his mighty power. That's what he's requiring. Then he goes on to say what in verse 19? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power? Verse 20. Uh-huh. Which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Which he worked in Christ. In Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him where? And seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. So the Father is saying here, all I need you to do is to have confidence in the truth. Admit 
and accept the exceeding greatness of his power so that you can begin to work with him in his mighty power. My heart is for you to work in his mighty power. And the only way you're going to be able to do that is understand the exceeding greatness of his power. Be able to comprehend it. Be able to say, Lord, I believe. Be able to say, I understand that you have, I, I have presence on the inside of me. You've given me the authority. That's the exceeding greatness of his power. You've given me the power that I need, the mighty power that I need in the name of Jesus to destroy anything that will try to overcome or come up against your plan and your will for my life. Yeah. And on, not only my life, my family's life, my friend's life, my co-worker's life, those that you have assigned for me to minister to. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Jesus Christ, the name of Jesus, the greatest weapon I know. Stand to your feet. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we love you, we thank you, and we praise you. We glorify you tonight, Father. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name for your name, for your name is great, Father. We thank you, Father, that you said in your word where two or more are gathered together in your name that you would be in the midst of us. And we thank you, Father, as we acknowledge you, Father, that you will move by your spirit tonight, Father, in their lives, Father, that you would give them dreams and that you would give them visions, Father. We thank you, Father, that as the people of God begin to partner with you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that they will bear fruit and fruit that will abound to your account. We thank you, Father, that the eyes of their understanding will be enlightened on a regular basis, Father, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father, that they would know the hope of your calling. Father, we thank you, Father, for the greatest name we know that is a weapon, and that's the name of Jesus. Seal this word in our hearts, O oh God. Brand it in our spirit in the name of Jesus. And remind us of this word, Father, when difficult times may try to present themselves. And so, Father, we give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. If you'd like to give tonight, you can give.